Hello guys, this is Jin here. Today we're going to review one of the good products that IKEA just released in Malaysia today. This, this is what we call a... Windrickning. Windrickning, which also means wind directions in Swedish. It's a PM 2.5 air quality sensor and it's super value actually at the moment right now. This is right now in Malaysia, it costs around 49.90 ringgit Malaysia. A usual PM 2.5 sensor module alone easily costs around 100 ringgit if you buy from like your e Element 14s or even your Lazada or Shopee website. So this IKEA wind drinkings air quality sensor, it actually is way cheaper than everything else that. And the best thing of all, you can actually modify it and integrate it to Home Assistant to give you the perfect reading at a very low cost. So today we're going to take a look on this and before this, I'm going to unbox this first. So the Windrick thing actually is quite small, I would say. So we do have a user manual with all the language and everything. So from the spec sheet itself, we can see that it actually doesn't come with a USB-C adapter. This thing only comes with the, the uh, sensor module itself. And it doesn't come with the cable and it doesn't come with the adapter itself. This thing uses a USB-C cable connector. According to the use, uh, power usage here, this thing uses around 100 milliwatt, uh, milliamp. So this is around 0 0.5 watt. Uh, usage so you can technically power with any PC or any spare USB power easily no problem as long as USB-C compliance so how this thing works is actually very simple actually let me put this aside so before we take a look apart let's look at this as you can see here is the air compartment there's I think there's actually space for us to actually access this area and it's actually just the indicator. So this IKEA products basically tell you like is your air quality is quite bad, good, or moderate by using three different colors. There will be a green, there will be a, a yellow, and there will be a red, a red as well. So let me unplug my USB-C and let's plug in and see. So you can see, yes, orange has a red. And now it's blinking for stabilization. This thing requires around 40 seconds to actually stabilize. As you can see right now, my air quality is actually quite good. So it shows you the green color. But little that a lot of people don't know that this sensor actually output a precise value that we can easily capture using an ESP8266 and then send over to our home assistant setup. So I'm gonna show you how to do this next. Before this, let's take down Let's open up this thing and see what's inside here. So we see how this device works already. Let's open it up and see what's inside there. It's only for Philips screw. Uh, you might need a smaller screwdriver head because the screw is quite small. Yep. So by popping all four screws, is it? Then you can open up the device itself. So yep, you can see the four screw coming out. So as you can see, here is the the LED board itself. This is where all the controllers, the LED will showcase all the data, everything. We have a USB C power supply here. There is a mini fan adapter that we didn't seem to use this time. And they label it quite nicely that like, what is the green color, red color, the fan power, everything, and it seems to design to be hacked. 
before this, let's take apart the device and see what's inside there. So let me disconnect in this thing as well first. So what we have inside here is actually a PM 2.5 module. This is a PM 2.5 module created by Cubic. Yeah, the CUBIC. And should be a IR dissipation thing. And it did have a fan come in here. Wow, quite sophistication. So you can see we have few cables. I believe uh, two of them is grounds and five volt. The other one should be the IXGX, the serial port that command is sent over there. And this is a fan, uh, fan power itself. So then we take a look on the board itself. The board itself did have three screws. Let's open it up. Okay, so, okay, so the board itself, as everyone can see here, the board itself has a USB-C power supply, that is a little bit of, I think this is an ESD, uh, ESD protection chip for any ESD, any ESD jokes, and there's some resistor to limit the inrush current. So this should be just using like like what it says out is uh, down hundred milliamp, and then the power come back to here for chargings, and we are using. Let me see what is this. This is it's E soft EP seven P zero zero. This this is a eight pin microcontroller. They're actually using right now, and then we do have some extra pin here. As you can see, so we do have what kind of pin we have here. So first of all, we do have another connectors that's supposed to be soldered, but it didn't get soldered in. I believe it's for other purpose. This board, in my point of view, it might be designed for the air purifier to be used together with the air purifier. So the air purifier itself may be connecting through this port, which providing the 5 volt power, the ground, the, 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 the data signal command through here. And this seems to be another port, uh, another connector that didn't solder up. So this might be sitting over at the purifier. Rather than connecting power using this port, it can then reuse the same board design, but using this connector instead. Then we do have the LED light. The LED light, the fan controller itself, the LED green color, red colors, and the other colors will be up there, I guess. Yep. Then we have the LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, LED 6. So we do have a few different color LED in the first place. So let me power on this without the fan. Okay. I see. So they are actually multi colors. One block here, as you can see, here with the green color, the orange color, and then the red color on top. So as you can see, we do have a lot of space inside here for, for it to be work, continue working at that. So we might be able to do something right. I mean, this space up here, we can actually use it to put an ESP, or what do you call it, the remote inside here to actually get the data because the way this thing works is you suck in the air from this chamber down here and then you disperse through here so this will be the exit air so but we don't think we have any much pollutions on term of the PM 2.5 using here yeah seems good now let's start tingling with this okay so here we're gonna try to solder Wemos. This one you can easily get from Lazada or anywhere else for like 10 ringgit or 15 ringgit. It's very cheap. We don't need to solder this thing yet because we're just gonna put it in. So before this, let's try to measure the size first. So you can see here, 
We can close this thing down together easily. So we do have some space on top here that we can put our ESP. Maybe we just left it hanging. Out. We're gonna put it here somewhere there. So we're gonna give the ESP a 5 volt. As you can see here, there's a 5 volt here. There's a ground. And I most probably can use a D1 as the data input for this. So how do we get data from the IKEA air quality sensor? So they are nicely break out for us. You can see this is a 5 volt pin here. This is a ground pin here. And that is a rest pin. That is will be a result pin. That will be, I think that will be the RX pin. So we're gonna just connecting this thing towards the sensor. I can read directly from here all the data result. So let's get started. So let's put this aside first. Okay, let's look at our pin. So we're gonna use some broken tether pin to actually do it. So what you need is actually quite simple. You actually just need a wire stripper. So strip up around this length. So one of the tricks is to twist it circular so that it becomes a solid whole strand and you move it into the pin here and then you twist around this corner. So once we're done, just to double make sure again, the 5 volt is connected to the red pin, the ground is connected to the brown pin, and then the D1 is connecting to the orange pin. So we might have some excess flux over here. I don't like that, so I will use uh, electric electronic cleaner. You can get this very cheap from Mr. DIY to actually clean up a bit here. Spray a bit and then we wrap it. So next is actually we're gonna connect it to this board instead. So first of all, let's remove this board first, and then we take out this container. So I grab this thing, the wire stripper. We strip out the excess amount. Then before we start soldering this, there's actually an easier way we can do, which is by tinted this uh, pad itself. Five wood, uh, then ground, and then a little bit flux on the result here. So you're gonna make sure that you're connecting the five wood ground and the D1 pin to the VMOS accordingly to this picture. Okay. Clean up a bit to make sure all this cable doesn't connect to each other and they are soldered well in place into this port. Then we can try and plug and see, see where we can get this reading or not. Okay, we are done. And then we plug in our ESP. So right now he detecting our air quality is not very good right now. And from the result I see from here we're getting around at 110, uh, 55, 55 mg. So the thing about this uh, IKEA PM2 sensor, tip 2.5 sensor, it actually have a sensor for brightness control. So this LED won't be super bright. So for example, if I cover the light here, you can see the red light become very dim now and it's a very bright area, it become very bright. So this is very cool design. And now I'm gonna proceed to the the software session and how you actually load your ESP into it. Tasmostar.github.io slash install. This is the latest Tasmota web installer. So you plug in your ESP into your USB port and then go to this website. Then you come to the website, you come down a selection set, you can drop down the selection here. Then you can see, go all the way to the bottom and see the special part here. Uh, we should select 
uh, Tasmota all sensor but apparently at the moment right now the all sensor link is broken so let's try to select Tasmota Mega they are all designed good enough for the VMOS so then you press install you prompt out the whole thing uh, the, the serial port connections from the Chrome itself oh yeah by the way you have to use a uh, Chrome based uh, browser I'm using a Microsoft Edge you can also use a uh, Chrome browser as well uh, Safari and Firefox is not supported so you selected your USB devices that are connected to your VMOS. You just press connect. And then it will start installing this. So when installing complete, you will see an all done sign here. And then what you can do right now is you go to your drop down menu of your Wi-Fi connections here. Go to other network. You should see something like Tasmota with the special number appear behind it. Click to connect to that devices. So right now, you come out this browser screen that asks you to join Tasmota. This this way. Right. So I'm gonna connect to my home Wi-Fi, which is PT test here, and just enter your password and press save. So the device itself will then try to connect to the same devices right now and it will show you the new IP which is in my case uh, 2.76 So here we are, we are inside here As you can see this is a default setup that we listed so not basic plus moda So first thing first we are going to do is we try to do a configuration change Press configurations Press configure module Select generic the number the Z number zero one and press save. The device will restart and then you are able to access the menu in a few seconds time. And then you see this will be generic. So in the generic form, what you can do now is press configuration, then press configure module again. And you notice we have a lot more GPIO pin that we actually can access right now. Just now we are connecting our the data pin to D1, which is GPIO5. So we have to select GPIO5 here and drop down to where we find our sensor, which is here, in drifting. Okay, and then we press save. And that's it. We will restart in a few seconds. So if we config successfully, we will get to this screen. And if you actually have the data, everything reading out, you can see data actually coming in right now. So this will be easy to assess for you and you can actually use this to connect to your home assistant by entering your information. So in my case, I have my home assistant set up using MQTT server. So just press configure, configure it, MQTT, and just enter your username and password for your home assistant MQTT server and press save and then you can see in your home system. So as you can see, this is my home assistant and you can see our air quality PM2.5 is here. Our data reading so far so good. And this whole configuration is come from the Tasmoda setup where we have the Tasmoda setup here. They actually read out for our internet data I think. Okay. Hope everyone can have any look at this and if any question you can just ask me over at, and just comment below and ask me any question you want. Thank you. Bye.